And speaking of the pager explosions, at first glance, a pager appears to be just a simple wireless telecommunications device that was widely in use until around a quarter of a century ago. But for Hezbollah, this was their lifeline. An intentional move to avoid Israel from uh, detecting their location and use an old school method for communication. And this device, as per experts though, has three of the five most basic components to make an explosive device. You heard that right. A battery, a container, and a triggering device. What was left to add is a detonator, an explosive charge, and you have a mini bomb. In the aftermath of the pager explosions that occurred across Lebanon on Tuesday, leaving at least 12 dead and over 2,700 injured, these are some of the compelling details that have started surfacing. Let's just get down to the basics first. How did anyone get hold of Hezbollah's pagers? What really happened? Reports suggest that Israel had hold of these devices even before Hezbollah did allowing them the opportunity to tamper with the devices while in transit and before they crossed into Lebanon. It's important to note here that Israel has not made any statements regarding that attack. But history shows that Israel never claims responsibility or issues any statements indicating its involvement in such attacks. Reportedly, explosive materials weighing as little as 28 to 56 grams were implanted next to the battery of each pager. They were then fitted with a switch which could be triggered to detonate the explosives remotely. And this seems to be exactly what happened. Between 3.30 to 3.45, 3.30 to 3.45 p.m. local time, a message appeared on the pagers, reportedly appearing as though it was coming from Hezbollah's leadership. It turns out the message was just a precursor to activating the explosives. Reports indicate that Israel had tampered with the pagers as early as two months ago and as far back as 2022. The exact timeline is only speculative at this point. Amid a series of wide-ranging theories published since the incident occurred, we move on to another crucial question. Why now? Why did Israel choose September 17 as the date to execute these attacks? Well, it seems it had little to do with planning and more to do with urgency. As per a report by American news website Axios, Israel became concerned that Hezbollah may have figured its plan and hence took a decision to execute the attacks immediately rather than take the risk of being detected. As per the report, the Israel Defense Minister, Yuav Gallant, informed the U.S. Secretary of Defense, Lloyd Austin, allegedly Gallant only informed Austin about an imminent attack in Lebanon without divulging specifics about the operation. Officially, the U.S., meanwhile, has dismissed having any prior knowledge about the operation. Listen in. So, with regard to Lebanon, uh, the United States uh, did not know about, uh, nor was it involved in, uh, these uh, incidents. And we're still gathering uh, the information and gathering the facts. Uh, broadly speaking, we've been very clear, and we remain very clear, about the importance of all parties avoiding any steps that could further escalate the conflict that we're trying to resolve uh, in Gaza, uh, to see it spread to other fronts. It's clearly not in the interest of anyone involved to see that happen. Uh, and that's why, again, it's imperative that all parties refrain from any actions that could uh, escalate the conflict. So what was the impact of the operation and what really happens next? According to reports, Lebanon's health minister has said that at least 12 people died in the attacks and over 2,700 people have been injured, including civilians. The injured include at least 200 people who are in critical condition. The numbers that arrived at the emergency rooms are very big. It is obvious that it was in different areas because we saw injured people arriving at hospitals in the Daye and Beirut as well as injuries in the south, especially in Tyre and in the Beka areas. Hezbollah, meanwhile, in a statement, confirmed deaths of at least two fighters. Reportedly, family members of at least three Hezbollah leaders were also killed. Meanwhile, the injured reportedly included many Hezbollah members and Iran's ambassador to Lebanon. In a televised speech, 
on the 13th of February, remember, Hezbollah's Secretary General Hassan Nasrallah had, Hassan Nasrallah had cautioned the group's members and supporters that their phones were more dangerous than even Israeli spies. Subsequently, urging the people to break or remove their phones entirely. Hezbollah then reportedly distributed over 5,000 pages to its members, ranging from leaders to medics working in relief services. Following the latest attacks, will Hezbollah revert, go back to using pagers as a mode to communicate? Meanwhile, Hezbollah has vowed to retaliate against Israel. Reportedly, Lebanon's Prime Minister has said that the explosions represented a serious violation of Lebanese sovereignty and a crime by all standards. And Hezbollah has said that Israel will receive its fair punishment for the blast. What exactly would that look like remains to be seen. The Hezbollah chief reportedly will be making an address on the issue on Thursday itself. What will Hezbollah's attack look like? Remember on Monday, Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said that the country will expand its war goals to ensure that residents of northern Israel who had to be evacuated due to persistent attacks by Hezbollah since October last year can return home. The US had reportedly cautioned Israel about escalating its attack against Hezbollah as it could potentially ignite an all-out regional war. Officially, it remains to be seen what it says to Israel regarding the pager attacks and what has happened after that and whether an escalation of tensions in the region can be avoided, a region that, by the way, seems more and more to be on the brink. To stay up to speed with the latest news, download the Weon app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.